Hi, this is David. Today we're going to talk about the Internet of Things, often abbreviated as IOT. And the whole concept behind the Internet of Things is that we've got these devices that are potentially all over the world that are small computers that are capable of sending messages and receiving messages from the cloud. So we can have sensors on these devices that measure things like temperature or machine readings or location. Uh, moisture, chemicals and soil, just about anything that you want to measure and send that information to the cloud and once it's in the cloud then we have all the power of the cloud to work with that data to do machine learning models or store it in a database or slice and dice it and report on it or check for anomalies and take action based on things outside of a range, whatever your imagination can allow you to do. But the important thing is to get it into the cloud, get those that data into the cloud. And Azure has a tool called the Azure IoT Hub, which is specifically designed for collecting data from these IoT devices and then also sending information, sending messages back to those IoT devices. Uh, the way it works is that you can create a new IoT hub, and in that hub you will add devices. Now it says add, but I always think of it as registering the devices. Essentially, we're telling the IoT hub about the existence of all the devices with which it will communicate. And therefore, it knows ahead of time which devices to expect messages from, and if a rogue device tries to send the message, then it'll be rejected. So not only do we tell it, but we'll also have it provide a key, a secure key, so this secure communication between each device and this IoT hub. And once we've done that, then we could write like, whatever software we want on these hubs, on these devices to, to read information, create messages, and send them securely to the IoT Hub, and typically these are small messages, but there's a lot of them. Um, so it's the IoT Hub is very scalable, it can handle lots and lots of messages, and once it has it in the cloud, then we can start routing those to other parts of Azure. Put them in databases, have it run code, put it on a queue for another message to pop up, run some kind of uh, analytics on um, show this information in a Power BI portal, whatever you want to do. The whole power of the cloud opens up to you once you have that data inside of Azure IoT Hub. We can create an Azure IoT Hub the same way we create almost anything in Azure. We navigate to portal.azure.com and log in with our credentials and click this big green plus create a resource button in the top left. Um, IoT Hubs is down here under Internet of Things. If I didn't know that I could type it up here and find it. But I click on that and it brings up a blade for a brand new Azure IoT Hub. If I have more than one subscription, I would select it here. I'll put this into a resource group. I'm going to create a brand new one, call it DG Test RG. DG is my initials, and test tells me that I can delete this later. Click OK. I'll specify a region that I want it to be in. West is fine for my purposes, and I'll give it a unique name. I'll call it DG Test um, IoT Hub. Now I can also optionally click on the size and scale tab here. And here I can specify what size machine I want. Now uh, the is a free one, standard one. Uh, standard is fine for my purposes. It's only twenty-five dollars a month. Um, but if I want more scalability, then I can do that. And I can also scale this out, having multiple instances of it. But I'll just take one instance of the standard tier, and then I click on Review and Create and it does some validation here and I click on create and then it begins to actually deploy my selection to a brand new IoT Hub. Now this usually takes a couple of minutes so I'm going to pause the video and come back when that's finished. We are back. The deployment is complete. It took about three minutes for that to happen and this message popped up allowing me to go straight to my resource. And here we can see some information about our resource uh, including the endpoint right here um, and some of the options that we selected, for example, where it is and the size of the machine that it's on, etc. To make this IoT Hub useful, you'll want to have devices connecting to it. And we can give devices permission to connect to it by adding them here under the IoT Devices, which is down here under Ex Explorers. So click on that, and this blade shows up here. And I, I've just created this, so there are no devices already, but you could 
list them here and if you wanted if there were thousands of them you could actually filter that by adding some clauses in here but in order to add a device or as I think of it to register a device click on add we'll give the device an ID I'll just use sequential numbers for that we'll tell it how it's going to authenticate IOT Hub only supports secure authentication and then if we spec for example symmetric key then we can either provide our own keys by clearing this checkbox or just let Azure IoT Hub generate those keys in which case we'll want to send those keys down to the device and all the rest of the everything else here is um, the defaults are just fine so I'll click on save it'll create or register that device and then I can go through here and add some more devices as well and now we've actually added some devices and if there's just too darn many of them then I can specify, you know, device ID equals device 002 or something else that allows me to filter to show only a certain subset of those devices. Uh, we'll show more of this in, the next, in another video, but for right now, I've shown you how to create an IoT hub and how to register devices to, that are allowed then to communicate with that hub via their secure key and their name. This is David. Thank you for watching.